What's up, Internet? My name's Ori. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. You like this video? Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. You never miss a stream. Today is Thursday, August 11th, and it's day 37 inside the Big Brother house. Uh, wild that we're already here. Uh, we do have a lot to go over today. We have an episode recap. A lot that happened on the feed last night when you would have assumed this would have been kind of a mild day with not a lot going on. Uh, and then also tonight, we do have the live eviction episode. Uh, and we have confirmation the Festy Besties will be ending and there will be a wall comp, which... There's no confirmation just yet that it will be on the feeds, but it's most likely that it will be. And if so, we will stay live here on the channel until we have a winner after our live watch along for the episode. So if you haven't come out to one of our live watch alongs, make sure you come tonight because it's going to be a fun one. Wall comps, endurance comps, and double evictions are my two favorite nights of the year whenever we get that. So make sure you're here for that. But let's jump into the episode recap. We kind of ended things off where we left uh, Sunday's nominations episode with Monty, Joseph, and Terrence up on the block. And they kind of played into the whole narrative that maybe Monty would be a good person to go this week if nominations happen to stay the same after veto. Uh, Michael talked about, hey, this might be the time to take a shot. But uh, in all reality, it was only really true for maybe a hot minute or so. Uh, on the show, they like to extend it and play out that drama. Uh, but we did get Dan and Terrence uh, talking about their whole plan to kind of have the nominations stay the same. And Terrence has no clue that if the nominations stay the same, he's probably going home because of the votes. It would end up being 4-4 with Michael as a tie at the very best. Uh, so why he thought this would be uh, a good move is, is kind of beyond me. But yeah, it was a thing. Uh, after that, we did get a little update on Muffin. Gate, which was fantastic that Turner he, he called he called uh Jasmine a low rent Columbo. <laughs> She's like hiding behind chairs and stuff like that. Terrence, though, Terrence has to go and be a narc and tell Jasmine that Turner was the one who ate the muffin. Uh, but Turner denies it like a champ when he's confronted with he was like. If I knew, I would tell you, because you're my festy bestie. <laughs> uh, so that was kind of fun to see that. It was more filler and kind of a continuation of the Muffin Gate situation, which we have covered in depth here on uh, the channel already. Uh, we then had Michael, Brittany, and Taylor kind of discussing, like, hey, Monty is a threat, right? Maybe it's a good chance. Kyle ended up showing up, and he thinks it's a good idea, too, but he's really just scared because he doesn't actually want to go up on the block for any reason. Uh, and uh, him and Alyssa are kind of, you know, becoming kind of big targets because of the whole showman's thing. Uh, the veto competition was Otev, Jasmine and Turner's name were picked, uh, so they competed with Monty, Terrence, and Joseph, as along with Michael and Brittany. Brittany was the first one out, then Jasmine, Turner, uh, after that, Joe went out, Monty went out, the final two were Terrence and Michael, and right at the top, uh, when they were just getting ready for that final round, Terrence tells Michael, you need to win this, uh, it'll make sense later, but you need to win this. Uh, so Terrence pretty much threw the competition to Michael, and that makes it his fourth POV of the year. One HOH, he has five competitions on the season already. That is incredible. Uh, he is uh, getting ready to set records inside this house uh, with a couple of more wins, but it's putting a huge target on his back uh, with all these comp wins. So uh, going to be interesting to see as things escalate along when he will be the one uh, who really actually does get targeted or if he can kind of wiggle his way through and get out of this situation. That gave him full control for the week. So if he really wanted to, he could have sent uh, Monty uh, packing this week and put him up on the block. But he stays loyal to the leftovers uh, since the convenience store. <laughs> they really, they really overplayed their hand. By the way, if anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about with the convenience store, uh, it's what uh, the leftovers are pretty much calling the other side of the house. Because they, they'll, they'll always do what's convenient and they have no loyalty. And, hey, if you really want all the information, they're open 24-7. You can just go there and get what you need. 
uh, they all really overplayed their hand and they came to him like one after another. And the episode did a good job of kind of showing that. It was like, yeah, it was one after another. Literally, if you were watching on the feeds, it was one came in and left. The other came in and left. It was back to back to back. Uh, so that kind of uh, scared Michael of being like, OK, they're they are actually really up to something. We knew what was going on. And uh, his nomination speech was fantastic, said, you know, to quote my favorite Elvis impersonator, what's good for the house is good for me. <laughs> Turner was holding back laughter. I love Joseph's face. He was like, <gasps> he was just in complete shock. <laughs> it was great. Uh, and uh, yeah, that pretty much is how uh, the episode ended. Uh, Daniel is the target uh, for uh, tonight. So uh, I expect him to go. Uh, but I also expect during tonight's episode that they're going to kind of play into the whole Kyle and Alyssa showman's being a threat. Uh, and they're probably probably push that uh, before the actual vote during tonight's episode. Uh, we also found out that they're, like I said in the beginning of the video, no more Festy Besties after this week. They are going to be done, and we're going right into an endurance comp to start this next phase of the game. Uh, again, we don't know if it's going to be on the feeds, but if uh, history is any indication, the wall comps are usually shown on the feed. I can't remember a season uh, where they haven't uh, shown the wall comp on the live feed, so we should be able to watch that tonight. Uh, uh, if you are around for the live watch along party, definitely come on out. It's a good time. Hang out and chat. Uh, everybody gets to talk about what they're thinking about in the house. Uh, and it's always a good time to watch that, especially with the wall comp. We will stay live until we find out who the HOH uh, is uh, for this upcoming week. Uh, but that pretty much covers the whole episode side of things. Let's get into the live feeds because there's a lot from, well, first off, let's start with, uh, we have confirmation now. Uh, we talked about yesterday, there was the whole secret messages that were being sent from uh, Jasmine and Indy underneath a blanket. And, well, uh, a lot of the rumors were right. Jasmine uh, does have a crush on Joseph. Uh, she, I guess, told uh, Alyssa this as well. Maybe Indy told Alyssa. I'm not 100% sure, but Alyssa told Kyle. She's like, yeah, Jasmine. Jasmine's attracted to Joseph. <laughs> so we have confirmation in that. It's a bit of a sticky situation, though, right? She's she's a married woman. And uh, Joseph's 25-year-old lawyer who we want to see with Taylor. <laughs> so a little bit of a sticky situation. We'll see how that all develops uh, as the weeks go forward. Daniel uh, continued campaign, and he actually went and met up with Alyssa, and he spilled a lot. So, first off, he pretty much nailed the leftovers. He he listed them all one by one, saying they're all working together, including Kyle in the whole situation. Told her about how last week there was a plan to not use the veto and to send uh, Alyssa or Indy home uh, instead of Nicole and how everything was all Monty's big plan, and how they're manipulating her, and Kyle is even in on it. Uh, she went right to Kyle afterwards, um, and pretty much told him everything. He did a pretty terrible job of uh, <laughs> saving and salvaging the situation, but she seemed to buy it, uh, because, well, puppy love. <laughs> so that's how that all went. Michael and Brittany had uh, a talk, uh, and they were uh, kind of discussing the whole Joe and Kyle being able to float between the middle and and how that kind of bugs uh, Michael. Um, and uh, listen, I get his point, but Joe is putting in work. What Joe's doing um, game-wise isn't what Michael's doing, right? They're playing different games, but they're both doing work to make sure that the leftovers are getting to the final seven that that's their goal uh from everything that i can tell and it yes i he has a point that bringing up things like jury votes and and such isn't isn't the best the best look uh but uh, i get his point but i also see where uh joe shouldn't have to worry kyle psh, kyle is no loyalty at all but we'll get more into that later <laughs> um during the conversation Brittany was actually more worried about taylor uh, of all people, and she is very loyal to Michael and Brittany, who she actually had a cam talk later that we'll mention uh, where she said she wants to ride with uh, Michael and Brittany as much as she can. Um, 
And uh, Mike, uh, Michael was very, he, he's starting to get this idea that, hey, look, Turner's got a great memory. Turner has this weird ability. He can list all 50 states like really quickly, like it's all of them. Like he just nonstop just lists them. Uh, so apparently he has a really good memory. He's been pretty good in comps so far as well. He's shown he's willing to put his body on the line to get that win. Uh, so Michael is a little bit worried about him, especially later in the game when there's a point right around Final 7 where the social game doesn't matter as much anymore. And it's a lot about the competitions. You need to win the certain competitions at the right time or else you go home. So uh, once Turner would get to that point, and if he can start uh, racking up some comp wins, he could be uh, a big threat to uh, go really far, maybe even take out Michael and Brittany. Um, Kyle and Taylor actually had a convo where Kyle said he wants to win HOH so he can say he wants to take a shot at Monty uh, and Michael, uh, but really help set up uh, a backdoor uh, and make sure that the other side aren't that worried uh, when uh, it comes to that kind of a situation. But I also don't know if I buy it. He might just be saying that to Taylor so that he can set up the seeds that when he puts up Michael and Monty, he's okay when one of them stays on the block and they go home. But again, we'll kind of see how that develops uh, in the weeks moving forward. With the whole bestie, festy thing uh, going away, uh, I think it's really going to change a lot of the dynamics in the house, and it is going to open up uh, the game to allow people to make different moves uh, that they wouldn't have been able to make uh, in these past few weeks. Uh, it's also why I didn't really like this twist too much, to be honest. Uh, yes, it did lead us to uh, great stuff and great feeds and great blind sides uh, all throughout these past few weeks, but it was really in spite of the twist happening, not because of the twist happening. I'm not a big fan of when uh, the game is limited and makes the players have less options. I'd rather them have more options and more abilities to do things. Uh, so I'm glad to see it finally, finally going. Uh, Brittany did another little uh, meditation hypnosis uh, session, which I'm glad that she's getting able to kind of show herself. That was something that she also uh, was uh, upset about kind of the other day when we talked about how she was having a really rough day. Uh, that was also something that she kind of brought up where she's had a lie about this uh, the entire time and she feels bad about it. But also it's kind of too late to tell them the truth about it. Um, but she is... You know, I'm sure it would make her happy to be able to kind of use these uh, skills that she has uh, more openly and gives her a little bit more confidence. And I'm not sure, but this could have set up a chain of events uh, to lead to some of the wildest things uh, that ended up uh, happening later on. Uh, it was like uh, it kind of woke them up uh, to uh, some madness. Maybe, maybe I need to reconsider my stance on whether or not I believe in hypnosis because uh, it was uh, it was kind of wild. The first thing that was that was really uh, kind of blowing my mind was uh, Turner and Jasmine ended up kind of bonding a little bit throughout the day. Uh, at one point, they were debating uh, MF Doom. If you guys don't know who MF Doom is, I'm sure there are some of you who don't. Jasmine definitely didn't. Uh, he also might be known uh, a little bit more uh, commonly as Mother Effer Doom. <laughs> so uh, he is... Uh, just was someone who was uh, very big uh, in the rap community um, and culturally just had a huge impact uh, in in the music world. And uh, Turner was kind of defending that. And Jasmine's like, well, he couldn't have been that special if I never heard about him. <laughs> Like, all right, Jasmine, whatever. Uh, but they did have a conversation actually later where they were like, look, when the besties end, let's look out for each other. Let's protect each other. So it was kind of weird to see that happen. But uh, Turner then also went to the camera later on. He was like, well, I hope I said the right stuff. <laughs> I love Turner. Um, Taylor ended up having kind of some alone time in the HOH where uh, she just kind of chilled. She was a little, she's over Dan, right? At this point, like, she wants Daniel out of there, and uh, she was a little bit mad at the others because they still socialize with him even after uh, his actions to her and what she said, uh, what he said to her uh, about Paloma and Nicole and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
And she's like, I can't even hang with Joseph without Indy getting all crazy and getting up in my face about it and being like, oh, why is she hanging with him? Um, and then it, she has a, a really good point because at this point she can't be a floater. Uh, literally, these were her words. Can't be a floater, uh, but now she's a coaster because she's not winning competitions. And I want to make a big shout out to Taylor because she is someone who wasn't a super fan coming into this show. Uh, she only started watching last season uh, for Big Brother. And when she decided to apply and get on the show, she has done her research. Like, she knows the history of Big Brother way more than a lot of supposed super fans do. Not only did she know the difference between a floater and a coaster, uh, she knows things about, like, uh, Rachel's tequila. She knew about pressure cooker. She even knows about Big Brother Canada stuff. She knows about the the icon, uh, Ica Wong, uh, shredding the letters. So... Taylor really has uh, done a lot of really good homework. And that actually kind of brings up an idea I was thinking about. Uh, because what are some things that you think all self-respecting super fans should know? What, like maybe uh, what is the actual history of the back door and what is a back door and isn't a back door. And if somebody plays in the veto, it's not actually a back door and how the six finger plan came into place with Nokomis uh, and even how she wasn't the original person who came up with the idea. If anybody knows who actually came up with the actual idea for the six finger plan, put it in the comments down below. But also in those comments down below, let me know what do you think are things that super fans should know absolutely should know about big brother uh because taylor has really done a great job for being someone who wasn't a super fan to actually knowing a lot about the history of big brother uh she also mentioned too uh before we move on from kind of her talk that she had uh she wants to make a pitch uh to joseph for a final two uh because as far as i know joseph i don't think has a final two with anyone in the house uh nothing official at least so it would be kind of cool to see her solidify that because taylor also doesn't have a final two so it would be kind of cool to see them finally coming together jailer as a final two i think that would make a lot of people happy <laughs> um after that joseph taylor and michael had this little plan because she was up there. Joseph eventually came up and Michael came up too, um, where they said Michael was going to say he caught Joseph and Taylor eh, having a little fun <laughs> in the bed. And they said like, oh, you should even say that you might have to change your sheets. <laughs> this, uh, as well as all part of that fake showmance that was originally designed uh, to kind of uh, hide uh, the leftovers uh, and hide the, reason why joseph voted for taylor to stay over uh amira or over nicole uh last week and it's really it's going it's going to plan uh he went into action uh later in the night he had uh some talks with uh Alyssa trying to get some advice for it and uh it was, it's it's been it's been fun to see everybody kind of just be fooled uh by this uh fake showmance which in my opinion might actually turn into a real show, man, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, like I said, actually, uh, there was some girl talk. So Indy, Alyssa, and Jasmine invited Taylor to have some girl talk, and they actually talked about the whole, uh, you know, Joseph situation, and they were actually being very nice with her, and it was like, oh, you know what? This is this is nice to see Taylor included in this, and they talked about how she's going to wear a red dress uh, tomorrow because it's revenge day, and she's like, even though I might have to change into something athletic, I can do it quick. <laughs> so she's going to wear that for, for the eviction, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. <laughs> and uh, they all kind of agreed, like, hey, let's get a guy out next week. Let's go for a guy. But as soon as Taylor left, <laughs> Jasmine, Indy, and Liz, they all started with, hey, we're just going to use her for game. Right, this is, we can be fake. We can be nice. They want to wrap her around Jasmine's finger, and it, it it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. But they think it's gonna happen. <laughs> um, let's see what else uh, do we have here? Oh, so this led to uh, another interesting thing uh, that happened. We have a new alliance that is formed, a five-person alliance. And that five people are Jasmine, Indy, Alyssa, Kyle, and Joseph. 
<laughs> They're calling themselves the Five Swatters. To give you a little context with this, we talked about the other day how uh, Turner was actually trying to kill some flies with a pool stick. <laughs> Bugs are always a problem in the Big Brother house. Uh, and Joseph has made it a mission. Try and kill as many flies as you possibly can. <laughs> this, again, is all just to kind of make uh, the girls feel uh, comfortable and safe. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they're calling themselves the five swatters. And, actually, we can bring up our alliance chart because I have added it in, even though it's fake. Uh, and there's a nice fly swatter to go with it, including flies. <laughs> This then led to another thing that happened where Indy and Jasmine encouraged Kyle and Alyssa to kiss for the first time. The first time. And then they were like, well, maybe just a peck. Maybe just a little peck. And so they so they kiss and then everybody goes, well, it's official, it's happening. It's happened this a lot already, guys. Relax. In fact, Kyle and Isla, they've been spending a lot of time in the have-not room alone off feeds. So, are they? I don't know. I'll let you guys be the judge of that. <laughs> they did mention that if Indy wins uh, HOH, she will let Kyle and Alyssa have the room up there. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> let's hope that Indy doesn't win and let's hope that we don't have to watch that on the feeds. Um, again, I mentioned there was some late night talk from uh, Joseph and Alyssa and they were really kind of chatting showman stuff, right? Like he was like, so what's the, what's the deal with Kyle, right? And what's up, uh, you know, what do you think I should do with Taylor? And they had some game talk in there too. They kind of went over uh, how Monty and uh, Alyssa, who... Alyssa thinks this is news to Joseph, but he was like, yeah, we were in an alliance. <laughs> uh, it's all stuff that, like, Joseph knew, and he's just like, oh. I love Joseph's shocked face. It's always, oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it was just, uh, you know, Joseph kind of stringing Alyssa along, making her think uh, that uh, what she was saying was news to him, but it really wasn't. Taylor ended up joining for a little bit, too. Uh, and, uh, Lissa thought she was going to leave them alone, right? But they ended up, he ended up just kind of filling in, uh, Taylor on what happened. And then they just continued to chat and there was some game talk, but they're really just kind of hanging out, which kind of fuels the fire more for Jailer to be a real thing. But what do you guys think? Let me know. That pretty much wraps up, uh, what happened, uh, on the live feeds. I know this was, uh, this was a lot. There was a lot to kind of go over today, uh, cause a lot happened, uh, not only on the live feeds, but in the episode. And then we have a lot that's going to happen tonight on the live eviction episode. We will be here on the channel for our live watch along. Like I said, if you haven't been to one before, definitely want to come on and check it out. Uh, cause they are a lot of fun chatting with all you guys live, uh, answering a lot of questions that you might have, but also just enjoying, uh, the chaos that has been this season. Uh, so make sure if you are new here, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button uh, if you enjoyed that video, and hit that notification bell uh, so you never miss a video and you never miss a stream. Uh, my name has been Ori, and I will see you next time. <laughs>